Long before the modern Japan we know today, the ninja worked secretly in the shadows for hundreds of years. Public records about the ninja are scarce. Ninja Truth. The ninja were often tasked with gathering detailed information and often one of the safest places to store that information was up here. So it's not surprising that the ninja would develop special techniques to further reinforce their memory skills. In this episode, we take a look at Ninja Mnemonics. Upon command, the ninja smoothly recalls information about the target estate. During the day, the ninja would pose as merchants and such to infiltrate places and gather information. Yet, how were they able to accurately retain large amounts of information without taking notes? A ninja document from the Edo period contains passages about their memory techniques. Here, it says to use exaggeration and use substitution to commit things to memory. These two methods are said to have been used by many ninja. For example, a ninja canvassing an estate needs to remember the guard setup. So he uses the exaggeration technique and creates a humorous story. Two samurai are wrestling in the yard when the solitary guard lets out a powerful fart. The stench causes the dog to bark in alarm. The surprised samurai collapse in a fit of laughter. Oi, Nanda, Nani Kayoka? Yeah, Nandemo. Kato Toshinori studies learning methods that enhance brain functions. Exaggeration causes each detail to leave a greater impression. And the greater the impression, the larger brain area it engages. So the more exaggerated it is, the easier it is to remember. The ninja frequently had to memorize multiple numbers. For example, the number of supplies and troops. For this, they used the substitution technique. First, the ninja would assign a number to different body parts and commit them to memory. Later, they'd touch the corresponding body parts while memorizing numbers. For example, if there were 35 swords, they would touch the eye for three and the mouth for five, creating the sequence for 35. If there were 28 gums, they would touch their forehead and chest to remember 28. It turns out this is a sophisticated form of a modern mnemonic device called the method of loci. Assigning numbers to body parts is the method of loci. Then they added motions to that. So they just have to remember the sequence. It's like learning dance steps. This is called procedural memory or muscle memory. Once learned, it's not easily forgotten. Kawakami Jinichi is a master of Kokoryu ninjutsu. 
he says he was also taught an extreme mnemonic device. It's called Fubo no Ho. Fubo means unforgotten. And it involves inflicting pain on yourself. The fear and pain that you experience in the moment effectively embed the memory in your mind. The ninja document, Shokan Kinjiroku, has the following passage about Fubo no Ho. For extremely important matters, inflict pain upon yourself. This will make your heart stronger and help you remember. Upon learning vital information, the ninja are said to have hurt themselves on the spot to commit the details to memory. You would prick yourself with a needle, make a scratch, or cut yourself with a blade. I'm sure it was very effective. Fear, anger, and pain are brain activities accompanied by emotions, and they create a vivid memory of the moment, including the when, where, who, and how. The cut serves as a visual cue and helps reinforce that memory. That's the mechanism of Fubo no Ho. While it may have worked for the ninja, it's not one we recommend using. The ninja also had a unique method to aid them in memorizing details. A ninja on a reconnaissance mission surreptitiously drops a bean in front of a shop. What could he be doing? It turns out this was a method the ninja used to tally up various structures simultaneously. that bring a set number of different beans. For example, red beans for shops, white beans for samurai residences, and black beans for wells. As they walked through the city, they'd drop the corresponding bean in front of each building. By counting the remaining beans later, they'd have an accurate count of each building type. regular items turned into spy tools in the hands of the ninja. In the days of old, people relied on torches to find their way at night, and the ninja are said to have developed some special torches. The Bansin Shukai alone mentions about 60 types of torches. And while it may seem like a contradiction, some of them include the word water or rain in their name. Professor Araki Toshiyoshi studies ninja fire arts. The Bansen Shukai mentions about 30 types of torches with water and rain in their name. From this, I think we can deduce that these were water-resistant torches. Water-resistant torches? How were they made? This passage here says to stuff sulfur and other ingredients into a bamboo tube. So it seems to have been shaped differently from the torches most people would picture. Enlisting the help of pyrotechnician Ito Teruo, we set out to recreate a mizukakyo, which we assume to be a water-resistant torch. The ingredients are saltpeter, sulfur, charcoal, camphor, pine resin, mugwort powder, and pine wood powder. The ninja would source these items themselves. To make the torch, the ingredients are crushed, mixed together, and packed into a bamboo tube. And there you have it, a mizukakyo. 
Hello, Professor. Good to see you again. So I heard that the torch was ready. Yes, here it is. So this is a Mizukakyo. This is our reproduction of one of the ninja's water-resistant torches, the Mizukakyo. It has a fuse here. Let's try lighting it. Okay, sure. It's time to put it to the test. Wow, it's burning. It sure is. And strongly too. The sparks shoot out of the Mizukakyo as it burns. With a flame like this, it seems likely to hold up in the rain. For comparison, we construct a standard torch of the time using pine branches, dried leaves and hay. And we bring in a rain machine that simulates 80 millimeters of rain per hour. Let's start with the regular torch and see how long it lasts. Ready, go! Ah, it went out pretty quickly. Torches are no good in the rain. Next up is the Mizukakyo. How will it perform? Wow, it seems to be holding up all right. Yes, the rain isn't affecting it at all. The Mizukakyo continues burning brightly in spite of the rain. When compared side by side, the ordinary torch is quickly extinguished, while the Mizukakyo burns strong. Well, that was a success, wasn't it? It was. And I think the Mizukakyo would hold up underwater as well. Underwater? Really? Is it possible for a torch to burn underwater? To test it, we'll submerge the Mizukakyo in this tank. Let's dive in! Wow, that's bright. Yes, it is. I can see the flame in the water. And it's still burning. Amazing. That's impressive. The Mizukakyo kept burning while submerged in water. Mizukakyo literally means water torch, and it certainly lived up to its name. That was a success, wasn't it? It was. But why is it able to keep burning after being placed in water? A substance needs two things to burn, a high temperature and oxygen. Because the gunpowder is shielded by the bamboo tube, the Mizukakyo is able to retain heat even when placed underwater. And when the internal temperature exceeds about 530 degrees Celsius, the saltpeter thermally decomposes, producing oxygen. With both heat and oxygen at its disposal, the torch is able to keep burning underwater. Ah, that's interesting. Although the Mizukakyo is categorized as a torch, from the way it burns, I'd say it was more often used as a flare to signal to allies or as an incendiary device for setting fire to enemy property. So the Mizukakyo was an exceptional tool. It was indeed. In this episode, we learned about ninja mnemonics and were able to shed some light on the special torches they used. From torches to mnemonics, the ninja constantly tried to improve their skills and success rates. Hope you found this episode to be memorable and enlightening. Join us again next time as we continue our search for the ninja truth. <laughs>